Let's talk about the Yamaha Stage Pass 600 BT. Now, I bought this as kind of the next step in our in the evolution of our do-it-yourself DJ package. You know, currently we send out two powered speakers, a Mackie mixer. You know, and I just thought this system kind of simplified that the setup for the end user. Um, you know, some people get confused by the powered speaker having to plug them into a wall. You know the the gain knob on the back, and you know with with one central thing you plug in and just running the cords to each one, I think it really simplifies things. Now I do I do think that we might use these for some smaller wedding dances. Um, we haven't yet, but I think that might be in the cards for us as well. I haven't owned an all-in-one PA system like this in probably 10 years. I, I owned an older uh, Fender Passport. I think it was like a PD250. It, uh, it had the, the two four-inch speakers in each, in each cabinet. And I liked it. You know, I, I did a lot of karaoke gigs with that thing. It was, a, it was a nice little system, but I just kind of outgrew it and wanted better sound, more bass. And uh, kind of just went to standard powered speakers and never looked back. Occasionally, I would check out, you know, what what's available in the in the all-in-one market just to see if there's something that would catch my eye. And really, there there has not been. Like the the output's never impressive. The frequency response isn't impressive. The mixers always kind of suck. But then I saw this, and you know, 129 dB. This thing gets loud. You know, our, our DAS Audio Action 12As do 131. We used to have a lot of the Electro Voice uh, ZLX 12Ps. I think they were 126, 127 dB maybe. You know, so for this to do 129, I mean, it's, it's loud. It's loud enough to do a wedding dance for 100 people. Um, it's definitely loud enough for our do-it-yourself DJ package. The frequency response down to 55 at negative 10, you know, it's not not super low, but you know, it, it's loud and or it, it's it's low enough. And the fact that the mixer has a subwoofer out makes it easy for somebody to add on, you know, one of our Yamaha uh, DXS12 Mark IIs if they're looking for a little bit more bass with their setup. So. All in all, this, this thing perfectly fits the bill for our do-it-yourself DJ rental. And also, I think it's good enough for us to use for some wedding dances. I actually used this with, uh, for a, a, a prom uh, just this last Saturday. I had uh, two of the Yamaha 12-inch subs as well. And then, and then this. You know, for me personally, DJing... I don't think I'll use this again. You know, I just, I kind of like to go out with higher end, more premium gear. Um, and this is lacking a few things that I would like for me personally, but for the average consumer doing a do-it-yourself DJ rental, I think this thing's perfect. Um, let's start with the mixer. So the mixer has four mic inputs, which is great. It should be more than enough than a person would need. Uh, it's got the high Z input if you're a musician and you want to plug an instrument directly in. The one thing I will say that I think is missing on the uh, XLR input channels is a high pass filter button. It'd be really nice if they just had a little push button for a 100 hertz and great engageable high pass filter. And I, I say that because at the prom I had, uh, with the 212s, I had, I had the subs kind of cranking pretty loud. But I was running into feedback issues with my microphone in the bass region. And, you know, the only way for me to get around that is to just take the, uh, you know, the low, the lows and just, you know, trim them way down. But then a lot of times your voice starts to sound thin when you're talking on the mic. You know, so it'd be nice just to, right at 100 hertz, just cut everything below that off. And that, that would have eliminated my feedback issues. Now this does have a feedback suppressor, and I tried engaging that, but you know, if, if you're not familiar with feedback suppression, it's not a magical solution that just instantly works perfectly. 
you know, feedback. I, I've had a few different feedback units. You know, I've got a, a drive rack with anti-feedback in it. I've, I've got the uh, DBX uh, AFS. It's just AFS. I know they have an AFS too now. Um, but, you know, it, it looks for, you know, an abnormal peak, something that's ringing and, you know, notches it out. That gets a little bit more difficult with bass frequencies because bass frequencies are inherently rumbly and kind of continue. So you can't really program an auto feedback unit to be like, oh, something's rumbly, notch it out because then you'll have no bass. So it's not as good cutting out the, the low frequencies as it is the high frequencies. And like I said, it's not a magical solution either. Um, one of my sound techs was doing sound for a band and we had the auto feedback on and uh, I think it was like an 80s band and they were like just singing this prolonged high note and all of a sudden their voice got notched out. <laughs> so like I said, it's not a magical solution, but auto, it is, I like that they put auto feedback in here because for a corporate speaking event, you know, anything like that where you don't want unintended feedback and there's no, there's no graphic EQ with this. So it is nice to have the auto feedback as just a little backup solution if somebody walks in front of the mic to, to have it notch out. So I'm glad they put it in there. Just know it's not the, you know, it's, it's not the 100% solution. It'll get you 70% of the way there. Uh, it's got RCA inputs. Um, it's got dual quarter inch stereo inputs. The one thing that I think is missing, oh, and now I'm seeing it. Headphone jack in. I was, uh, I was thinking I didn't have a headphone jack in on, on Friday. I was trying to play something off my phone, a song I didn't have. And uh, yeah, headphone jack in, I could have just used that. Well, that was a slight oversight by me. I haven't used the monitor outs. I have used the subwoofer out. That's probably one other gripe by me. So the subwoofer out has a fixed crossover point of 120 hertz, which... I think for the person that this system was designed for, that's fine. You know, on our DIY DJ rentals, nobody's going to notice the difference. You know, cross over the, the sub at 120 hertz, it's going to sound fuller, people are going to like it. For my personal taste, 120 hertz crossover for the sub and tops is a little high. You know, it makes the subwoofer sound kind of higher mid bassy a little, little different. I prefer 100 at, at a hundred as a peak. Weird noise outside, sorry about that. My neighbor's actually uh, moving all their stuff out into a, into a U-Haul right now. So if anybody's looking for an office space, I'm in a strip mall. There's one on each side of me available. Anyways, um, 120 hertz is a little too high for me. Uh, I like 100 at 100 at, at, at most, and if if you have good enough tops to where you can bring that below 100, I mean that's even better because then you really get the the sub to focus on the the low base. But like I said, for the for the person that this system was designed for and what we intend to use it for, the subwoofer out is just fine. Uh, I haven't personally used the effects. I, I think I'm, we might also start using this for some of our karaoke gigs. Having the auto feedback will be nice for that as well. Um, the Bluetooth, you know, I did try to use the Bluetooth when I when I when I wasn't noticing the the headphone jack in. I was gonna just Bluetooth my phone to this, and I turned Bluetooth. On, I've got an iPhone seven, and you know, I, I need to look in the manual to make sure I was trying to link the Bluetooth correctly. You know, I, I hit the Bluetooth button, the lights started flashing which I assumed was like the, the find, you know, Bluetooth signal mode. And I turned Bluetooth on on my phone, my iPhone 7, and it wasn't picking it up at all. So, you know, and, and that could just be me not, not reading the manual. So I'm, I'm going to look that up to see if I was doing something wrong. But, you know, I tried holding it in to see if that would give me a different mode, and it just seemed to shut the Bluetooth off. So I'm not, not, not too sure about that. You know, sometimes... Like we had a turbo sound, basically all the turbo sound inspire series, like those take forever for the Bluetooth to, to sync with my, my phones and my tablets. But then you look at like, uh, you know, our, our RCF, uh, 
JMix 8. I mean, that thing, the Bluetooth is like that on it. So I don't know, you know, maybe it's just they didn't put the best Bluetooth in here, or maybe I just didn't use it right. But I couldn't get that to work. Uh, I will say the power, you know, I kind of wish they, instead of putting the power plug right on the top, I kind of wish they would have maybe put power and outs on the side. Now I see why, you know, obviously it's easier just to put everything right on the top, but you do get a lot of cords coming out the top, and I do worry about, you know, accidentally pulling the power off. Um, one other thing I will say, in all of the Yamaha powered speakers that we have, they use a locking IEC cord. I kind of wish they would have used a locking IEC cord in this as well. Just because I do feel like with it right there, you know, it might be easy to pull it out. But, um, yeah, uh, the case I did buy the rolling, it's like luggage style case. Figured it would make things nice and easy for our rental customers. They're a little bit more expensive, but they hold the speaker nicely and there's a nice pocket on the side for the extra cords. So it is really easy. Basically now with our, with our do-it-yourself DJ rental, you know, all the cords, microphone, everything. In the back of the other speaker, there's a storage compartment. That's where the, the microphone goes, the cord for the microphone, the subwoofer out cord is in there and a headphone to RCA jack is in there and then the 25 foot quarter inch cords to go to each speaker we put in the side pockets of the case and the IEC goes in the side pockets of the case. Um, I don't remember if I said it at the beginning of the video but the quarter inch cords that go from the mixer to the speaker, the ones that come with it are junk. I mean, they might as well not even come with it. They work, but they're gonna, they're tangled up weird messes. I, I just, I chucked them in the garbage right away and just ordered some 25 foot uh, quarter inch TS cords. One thing to remember is they are TS cords. So you don't wanna go too long with them or you could start to run into some audio interference, especially if they're laying across power, you know, uh, electrical cords or anything like that. But I, I went with 25 foot, which I believe is a little longer than what comes with it, um, but uh, you know, at my gig, I, I didn't run into any issues with uh, any any sort of interference. Um, yeah, I think that's about all I have to say. You know, these these are surprisingly loud. Uh, they they filled up a gym for me. Um, I thought that my two Yamaha DXX12 Mark IIs we're going to severely overpower the output of the tops, but they didn't. I mean, these things get loud and you can, you can push them and they just sound crisp and clear. I think Yamaha is doing a really good job with the speakers they've come out with now. You know, I, I, I hate to use the term fanboy, but I feel like nowadays I'm like slowly becoming a Yamaha fanboy. And, you know, I just, I always think of Yamaha as like I never really looked into buying their speakers because I always thought of them as, you know, you go into a casino and you see like the old Yamaha passive club speakers that have had 40 beers spilled on them and have been sitting there for the last 15 years and they they work but they don't really sound that good. That's what I always thought of with the Yamaha speakers. And then, you know, I started to look at their new stuff that they're coming out with and everything just, the specs are amazing. You know, the price is right in line with everybody else's prices. The sound quality is great. Um, you know, Yamaha really seems to be hitting on all cylinders right now. And I don't know if they've just finally, you know, they've owned Nexo for a while. And I don't know if they're just finally really collaborating nicely and really, really using, you know, uh, Nexo's uh, engineering skills or what. But everything just seems to be coming out really good. And if you're in the market for an all-in-one, like, portable PA system like this, I, uh, I highly recommend this one. I think um, you can get a, a stand for this, I think, to mount on a, uh, like, a microphone stand. I think I will buy one of those because in addition to, we have a do-it-yourself DJ package, a do-it-yourself uh, karaoke package. 
I think I'm going to also come out with a like a do-it-yourself solo artist package that's gonna have this and then maybe like a, a Yamaha you know DBR10 for like a floor monitor and then um, you know a mic stand with the microphone so that somebody could rent it and go out and do a solo acoustic show with it but uh, yeah, if you have any questions on this, go ahead and throw it down in the comments section. And uh, I'm, you know, maybe I'll do an updated review on it down the road if I get some different thoughts on it. But right now, it's a nice system. So if you need one, go ahead and buy it. Have a good day.